and also the GBC College for Leadership Development, which is the only leadership college of its kind for uh, spiritual leadership. And uh, through the course of my journey of uh, working in the field of education and training and leadership uh, and study of the scriptures, uh, what I felt was there's a you know wide gap between uh, what the scriptures have to offer and the capacity of people to actually be able to you know kind of uh, digest it so in order to do that to present ready to um, you know kind of apply formulas uh, for our own personal application uh, i started uh, coming up with models so that we can directly apply what is there in the scriptures in in you know in easy steps so that's what this book uh, you are seeing on the left side is be the smarter you your app store for success and happiness. Okay. So uh, in this book, uh, basically the idea is that we are in an age, like we have grown coming from say, people say we have come from the iron age and now it's so to speak the iPhone age. And there are, you know, kind of smartphones, smart watches, smart cars, uh, smart uh, homes, you know, smart cities. But the people often using those gadgets and living in those homes and cities are often not that smart. Uh, they often get used by those gadgets rather than using them well. So basically with this idea, like kind of uh, a couple of years back, I started writing this book, uh, which has just as a phone has smart apps. So this book has got life apps, life apps, meaning that these apps you cannot download on your phone, but have to be installed in your, in our own personality. So there are apps such as life compass, just as uh, we need, uh, you know, for navigation, we need directions, right. From, from the GPS, right. So similarly in our life also, we need directions, whether to take a, decision this decision or that decision so how do we make those decisions do we have uh, a guidance there or there's there are apps on mind control habits discipline uh, relationship related issues such as forgiveness trust friendships and one of the topics is self drive or motivation which we'll be uh, discussing today uh, whatever time we have and try to see if we can, you know, actually apply these in our own life. So that's uh, the, the premise for that. So I'll just offer prayers uh, shortly, and then we will, with the right consciousness, we'll begin. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pareshtaya Bhutale. Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauruvani Pacharine, Nirvishunya Di Paschati Deshatarine, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktavanda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So well, we have uh, sixty uh, people who are there with us today. It's, it's a great uh, company that we are having. And uh, so, so some of the testimonials about the book, we'll just share. Uh, Dr. Vivek Bindra, all of you must be knowing him. So he liked the book so much, he called me over to Delhi and we did a few videos for his, you know, Bada business uh, platform. And uh, then uh, Mr. Ashish Johan, who is MD CEO, Bombay Stock Exchange. So he too, you know, kind of very much appreciated this book. Uh, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar, who is Padma Bhushan, architect of India's first supercomputer. Uh, Mr. Nilesh Kulkarni, Indian cricketer. Shamal Vallabhji, who is a sports scientist. Uh, well, and then Shuryatan Tata, recently, you know, I got an opportunity to uh, send a copy through my friend. And uh, he also very much appreciated this effort uh, of, you know, bringing, coming up with these life apps. So, now let's go into the today's life app, which is uh motivation or self drive right so these are the three things you know basically which we are going to uh, dwell on motivation it's the vital fuel for success and happiness actually in life and what are the types of motivation and steps 
we can take for enriching our motivation so these are some of the things that uh, we'll be discussing now if we uh, look at uh, this you know photo what do we see a child seems to be very desperately hungry right and he is so hungry he is ready to devour the whole um, you know plate of noodles <clears throat> now if you look at it hunger of the body you know if you are feeling hungry that's a sign of good health it will keep you healthy so have you ever thought about hunger of the mind hmm? so if hunger of the body keeps us physically healthy the hunger of the mind keeps us mentally healthy and active and agile so what is this hunger of the mind that is motivation now like in in my uh, you know work which i do is you know working with students and working professionals what i have seen that students some of them uh, may have you know passed many competitive exams and been placed in uh, some of the best colleges and maybe paying a hefty fees to study in those colleges but if they don't have the hunger for doing that course or doing that study even though they may have the best of the facilities provided by their parents even though if they may have the best of talent themselves but that doesn't translate into success because they don't have that hunger which is called motivation to study or do that course or similarly for uh, working professionals the same uh, applies so so two things hunger of the mind keeps us mentally fit and healthy and secondly hunger of the mind uh, keeps us positively engaged to contribute uh, positively to the society however many times it so often happens that this hunger jo agni hai that's weak you know we are not having that sufficient hunger for the things that we are doing in our day to day activity those things which we are supposed to do or we have to do which are essentials but if we don't have that kind of a hunger for that that motivation then what happens life becomes a drag and then there is a story of papers so that becomes a story of our life it begins with uh, you know i'll call down into this i'll pay okay so life becomes a story of papers can we mute uh, participants okay so the first paper you know whenever a person is born the first paper that we get is the birth certificate right uh, and that's that's the journey of our life it begins with a birth certificate and then as you grow up as we grow up then you know we go to school and in school there are books which are filled with papers and after reading those books at the end of the you know the term we have a question paper you know put across to us and we have also given an answer sheet which is also a bunch of papers so looking at that question paper we answer that answer paper on another paper and then at the end of the year we got we get something called a report card which is another paper right and year after year we keep accumulating those report cards and finally you know uh, we do an entrance exam and then go into the college right and in college there are some different types of letters sometimes love letters right also people write so again papers and then it comes to you know finally you get through college you get a degree certificate right and then what do we do with that degree certificate we make our resume we make our cv and we apply in various organizations and then uh, we get an offer letter another paper from that offer letter we join and then uh, again you can guess what happens there's a file stack of files again so many papers and you keep working on them you know throughout the month and the end of the month what we get is a very important paper which is the salary slip right and then after that salary slip the real paper comes out which is uh, you know your uh, the the currency right so that's the paper that everyone is looking for and then as one you know goes on one gets married marriage certificate comes in then you have children and children also have, go through the same uh, life cycle right 
and then at the end you make a will paper and then finally one paper is you know the final paper is something called a death certificate which we ourselves don't get right it is uh, kind of given to the relatives so is life all about going monotonously from one paper to another one activity to another right or life has a deeper meaning to it uh, so so that is something uh, without that deeper meaning what happens life just becomes so monotonous that we have to drag ourselves you know to daily routine daily chores daily activity that we have to do we don't want to do but you know it just we got to do it, those things so now what happens if we you know we don't have that self drive or motivation for doing what we are supposed to do or we have to do it it happens like this if if, if this you know truck it doesn't have that self drive if its engine is not running the driver pushes it but to no avail right or someone pushes and somehow with so much great effort this person is trying to push over the car you can see so if you don't have that inner fuel of motivation you know we have to matlab dhakka lagana padta hai gaadi ko apne life ki gaadi ko we have to just push it uh, on a day to day basis monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday you relax and chill off but then again the same routine monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so that's not good right we would like our life to have meaning and more motivation more energy so we can't ask others to push our vehicle right like this and even if others push this is what happens so those who are pushing they have a tough time so imagine a student who is not motivated to do what he supposed to do his studies his or her studies and what happens to the parents they keep pushing him and eventually they also get frustrated with it so like this child you see Mm-hmm. Uh, the teachers the parents everyone is trying to motivate that child right but the inner desire is not there or this person very interesting so uh, now if you can decode this this person when your boss asks for proof you are in a hospital so he has put his earphones in his nose and the charging pin and his hand as an iv so that's what happens when one doesn't have the you know real motivation to do what one is doing whereas now there are people who are so supremely motivated that nothing can come in their way of doing what they want to do and they uh, have decided to do so this is uh, some of you can someone type in the chat box who is this person manji yes it is dashrath manji uh yes thank you ganesh thank you arvin so this this is dashrath manji the legendary person who actually uh, carved a whole mountain with a chisel and a hammer with a hammer and a chisel so what happened uh, in his life was that he he was living in a small village in bihar and th- you know across you know a, a mountain uh, you know from the village there was a city where there were facilities like hospitals schools etc however you know if anyone had to go from his village to that city they would have to travel 70 kilometers around the mountain and reach there and it so happened that dashrath's wife was pregnant and she uh, was having labor pains and then on the journey through these 70 kilometers you know she could she succumbed to the you know uh, uh, medical complications and she died uh, miserably miserably on her way uh, to the city hospital so dashrath he didn't get uh, he definitely got dejected but he didn't uh, take his dejection as you know completely uh, going into depression but he took it as a positive motivator that what has happened to me or my wife should not happen to someone else you know future in life uh, in someone's life so he carved with a hammer and a sickle hmm? this is 70 kilometer pathway 
and uh, it took him you know uh, almost uh, 22 years right and reduced it to only 1 km and therefore he is called the mountain man of india dashrath manji a legendary person so won't we all of us want that we may have something motivating you know we may not face such difficulties to the scale that dashrath manji faced but still we find ourselves demotivated still we don't find ourselves having that fire to do what we are supposed to do so wouldn't it be nice if we have that motivation so i'll just uh, you know i'll just share a video Okay, I, I'm just working on the sound. A guy got one hundred and now, now is it audible? Now is it audible? Okay. Sixty-five million dollars after selling his company, he invested all those money into different businesses, and he he started living in a rented house. Only a crazy person will do something like this, right? because any normal person would spend all the money on big houses and luxury cars that crazy person was none other than Elon Musk who is currently the owner of many big companies like Tesla and SpaceX his net worth is now approximately 19.7 billion dollars this all happened only because of his madness and dedication because you need to be crazy if you want to be different than everybody only one in a million has such craziness and dedication and only those can do something like that jk rowling was rejected by 12 publishers everybody laughed at her for her ideas but she didn't give up her stubbornness led her to become one of the richest authors of all time Her Harry Potter series books are one of the highest selling books. A man left a high paying job to start a business in his garage. Now he is known as the wealthiest person on the planet, Jeff Bezos. There is another such crazy story of a person named Dasharat Moji. His wife died after an accident due to not receiving immediate medical care. As there were no nearby hospitals in his village. because there was a huge mountain between the city and his village so he converted his anger and sorrow into stubbornness and he carved a path 110 meters long deep through a mountain using only a hammer and chisel if this isn't craziness then what is and this type of dedication only happens when you feel completely broken 
Some people use their sorrow to mourn. And some people use it as a motivation. And those people are unstoppable. It's madness when everyone is planning a trip. And one guy is planning to build his empire. When everybody wants a job. Some think of giving jobs. And only such a crazy person grows up to become Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Such people are always hungry for success. They never get satisfied. That same madness, and dedication don't let sleep. They might fail 1000 times. But they will always keep trying. Until they get what they want. And only those will make history. And only because of this madness and never giving up. Such people brighten the world with their work. Yes, I am talking about Thomas Edison. Who invented the first ever electric light bulb. A 65 year old man, who was always rejected thousands of times in his life. But he didn't give up. And he started selling fried chicken at the age of 65. That man was Colonel Sanders. Today his business is known as KFC. That madness is the only thing that pushes normal humans. To do some abnormal things. So, whatever you want to do, whatever you love. Keep doing it and be crazy about it. And give your 100% in it. And you will get success for sure. Okay. So here what we, uh, yeah, I, I'm seeing some questions coming in. So please hold your questions uh, because towards the end we will, uh, you know, have discussions and questions. We'll have time for that. Meanwhile, let's, let's now delve into this. Uh, you know, videos showed that those people who have that fire to do something extraordinary, uh, who just don't want to lead a life of monotony, who actually look forward to having a meaning and purpose in life. Those are the people who create history. Those are the people who uh, actually contribute something positively to the world. So that was the kind of uh, gist of uh, what uh, this video is saying, and yes, of course, we are having a very nice, uh, uh, you know, example coming in here at the chat box. Our biggest inspiration is Avashila Prabhupada. You know, at the age of 69, uh, at, at the time when he was in Vrindavan, he had no, you know, everything was uh, very nice for, for him in Vrindavan, but he decided to take this message of uh, the Bhagavad Gita of Krishna consciousness to spread it all over the world and at the age of you know 69 70 he uh, traveled on a jaladuta on a cargo ship to go to the united states uh, after going on a journey for 40 days and then uh, the rest is history he created a history by actually uh, you know presenting this message and it spread all over the world and millions of people are getting benefited and will keep getting benefited because of this craziness or madness, if we can say, of uh, Shila Prabhupada. So let's uh, move in again back to the presentation. Okay, so here, uh, can someone say uh, on the chat box, what is this? Uh, what, what is this you are seeing in the image? Yes, hyperloop. It is. Uh, yes, we are we are looking at the hyperloop. So hyperloop is a, a special kind of a train which has complete elimination of friction. So uh, bullet train it levi it levitates, but it still has to deal with the friction of the air air resistance. However, hyperloop is made is kind of it operates in a vacuum tunnel. And so therefore, there is neither friction on the ground, nor friction of the air. And therefore, uh, it can attain speeds even higher than that of, you know, airplanes. So that is really revolutionary. So now, as we were talking about, you know, sometimes life becoming a drag for many of us, you know, the chores, the activities which we are supposed to do, we have to do, we just, you know, go over things monotonously, 
you know many times it it becomes a drag but what if we could eliminate all those frictions hmm, which cause us to you know get bogged down which cause us to you know really think or oh, really do i want to do it or really should i be doing it or really you know i i am getting bored so if we could r- remain you know uh, eliminate those frictions we could really progress faster in whatever we are doing whether it is material life or spiritual life so uh so let's see how we can unleash this hyperloop of motivation so that we get better at whatever we are doing and do it happily so for that we need to answer this most important question so there are many questions uh, which can be asked about anything right so can you uh, type in the chat box what are the different types of questions uh, which are there in the you know english grammar i'll, I'll give an example uh, what is the time right is a question so what is one question what are the other questions where why who how when which why not okay so uh, arti ji has given why where what when all together how okay so so many questions are coming in you know types of questions are coming in but one question which is constantly you know kind of repeated is why so yes that's the most uh, yes who has also come in uh so what is the most important question you can ask is actually why because why is the root of it from the root comes the you know trunk and from the trunk comes the branches from the branches comes the leaves and then comes the flowers and the fruits hmm? so the most important question is why we are doing what we are doing and if we don't have answer to this question then whatever other questions we may have perfect answers for rest of those things who is supposed to do what when how everything is answered but if the why is not answered then it leads to you know uh, a kind of a, a calamity so i'll just uh, share a small anecdote so once uh, there were two people uh, who were working on the side of a you know a uh, highway and one person was digging out mud and the other person both were in the uniform the other person was you know with a shovel placing the mud back in that hole in the ground so a passer by was going through that place and uh, this passer by was curious what is happening here one person is you know in the heat of the sun trying hard to dig out uh, this mud from this ground and the other person is actually putting that dust that dirt back you know into the same hole so he was wondering what is the purpose they are accomplishing here and so then he approached them and gently asked them ki sir may i know what business you are up to here you are we are working so hard i can see uh, in the sun you are very sincere people i i don't doubt that but then i don't understand why you have to do this and then uh, one of the you know these persons they answered that actually sir uh, we are a team of three people uh, you know i dig the hole he fills the hole and there's a third person who actually plants a uh, a uh, plant in that uh, he plants a tree in that hole but today he is on holiday so some of us are we have to do our ho- uh, our duty so we are doing our duty so uh, therefore we are doing our duty and then tomorrow if he comes then we will resume uh with his assistance so now here it's a funny anecdote but this is you know this is a very gross example but many times it may also happen in our lives you know without asking the question why uh, we may be doing certain things and everything from you know what who how when may be figured out you know they call it uh, you know the rasi matrix you know uh, that in the rasi matrix who is responsible who is accountable whom to consult whom to inform all of that is all those questions are answered but if the why is not answered then you know it may lead to such uh, uh, kind of embarrassing situations okay i'll present to you another uh, social science experiment which was done so in this experiment uh, you know what they did the monkeys are favorite for uh, the scientists because monkeys 
very much imitate or kind of resemble human behavior so if they want to learn about humans they they, they many times use monkeys so what they did uh, the social scientists uh, they put a set of monkeys in a cage and this was a special cage uh, the cage had a ladder uh, in it and it was a closed cage from all sides but at the top of the ladder there was a plate on which there were a bunch of bananas so now these monkeys were left and guess what will the monkeys do once they set their eyes on these bananas they'll immediately be fully motivated to pounce on those on the on that ladder to jump and grab those bananas but then the experiment as it would have it as soon as a monkey touched that plate immediately ice cool water would spray on the entire cage and everyone would be you know uh, having those uh, shivers because of cold and then the monkeys realize that you know after trying it for uh, several times uh, they realize that this is not going to work so they left the idea of climbing up the ladder and eating those bananas but you know as it happens so- sometimes someone you know uh, d- decides to break the rule so one of them would just go up and try to grab a banana for himself but then the others knowing what would be the consequences they would pull him down and beat him black and blue you know so this is as i said this is you know a similar to human behavior so that's what humans also do sometimes you know uh, and so so this monkey understood that no i am not going to do something like this i am not going to climb the ladder even though i may be tempted for eating those bananas i am not going to do it and uh, so so like that the monkeys understood and the bananas were started rotting lying there at the top of the you know cage but no one would touch them now what they did very interestingly they removed one of those monkeys from that cage and added a new monkey they added a new monkey into that cage and now what can you can you expect a new person has entered you know uh, can someone type in the chat box what is what will be the first thing that this monkey is going to do after entering into this new cage yes climb the da- ladder mm-hmm. get the banana yes so exactly so that's what this new monkey did and uh, <laughs> try for the banana and then guess what the others do beat him black and blue that uh, are you over smart hmm? what do you think we are are we foolish that we are sitting here doing nothing seeing those bananas out there and they would start beating him black and blue and this monkey understood that those bananas let them be rest in peace wherever they are i am not going to touch those bananas and now incident like what these scientists did they stopped you know that spray system so even if someone goes and touches that Uh, you know plate nothing is going to happen but still because they have a better experience they don't allow the new monkey to touch it and now one by one they have re- they gradually replace one monkey after another and gradually all the eight monkeys have been replaced and the eight monkeys previous monkeys have been replaced with a set of new monkeys right now these are all new monkeys but they follow the same pattern when the eighth monkey is introduced what he does he again goes and tries to get that banana and what the rest of them do the seven of them do they go and start beat him they start beating him now now seven of these monkeys have never experienced being sprayed by ice cool water now without being sprayed by the ice cool water they still are so uh, you know they still go uh, st- they still become so agitated and upset Uh, because it has become a social custom in their come in their society that anyone who touches the ladder has to be beaten black and blue hmm? so it is it has become a ritual in their community hmm? uh, without knowing the reason so many times this also happens in human society without knowing the reason behind the reasons you know uh, you know we we start you know we keep you know doing certain things just because that's what the society around us is doing so that's what we are supposed to do right 
and uh, you know when we talk about even organizations even in in a team or in organizations if people are not aware of the big why they may end up fighting with each other on trivial non existent issues so now here the ice spray was a non existent issue but we saw the monkeys fighting amongst each other right and none of them was getting benefited out of it because of one simple thing that they didn't ask the question why so what we are trying to emphasize is that we need to ask this question why because if you know we saw this example of uh, the two people trying to dig the hole and fill the hole again back so they didn't ask the question why as they were uselessly laboring these monkeys also were suffering because they didn't none of them asked that question why are we actually going around beating each other what purpose are we serving right so uh, that is a crucial factor for us so when we look at this hyperloop or when we look at the madness of uh, dashrath manji or other people that we saw you know it's 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 because primarily of this reason that we we, we have not sorted out the question why and there is this a very nice book by viktor frankl now he is a very well known and uh, reputed uh, uh, you know psychologist from the vienna school of psychology and he has written a book called man's search for meaning now it is one of the most you know uh, widely read best sellers of of this last century and what is this book about uh, can someone share on the chat box what is this book about uh, yes right on the spot arvind ji thank you so much this author he was a prisoner in the nazi concentration camp and uh, so his story is very interesting actually uh, now, when he he went, went to the this concentration camp it was all horror movie unleashed right in front of his eyes 80% of the people in those concentration camps it you know only 20% of the people in these concentration camps survived which means that death was sure they say as sure as death but for them death was sure like while they were in these concentration camps and they were had they had to work without proper food or water supply in unhygienic conditions they had to stay and work very hard uh, right and frankel Uh, he observed uh, you know very uh, some, some very interesting things in that camp what he saw was uh, some of these some of the people they succumbed to this entire depressing environment and so uh, and they felt that there is no meaning to life no purpose to life why are we suffering why is god making us suffer in such situation but there were others who actually went on to find meaning even in such suffering right because they asked there must be a why a reason why i am going through this so what uh, was happening in that concentration camp some of these people like uh, they were in glass chambers which were going to be gassed so some of these people were drawing beautiful you know the life cycle of a butterfly you know on, in that glass chamber uh, on on the walls and that from the caterpillar as you know it goes to the cocoon and finally transforms and comes out in the form of a beautiful butterfly with wings so even though the even their captors were surprised and you know at their wits end to understand why how can some someone make such beautiful pieces of art when they are going through such suffering but then uh, you know the real uh, you know they had this real meaning behind what they were doing so uh, they what their understanding was that currently they were in a situation like that of a caterpillar you know in a cocoon and uh, completely cramped up in a situation which is very suffocating but then they saw that they then then they felt that after this god is putting us through this suffering because at the end of it you know we will get purified and god will give us wings to fly free in the spiritual world in the abode of god and that's what gave them meaning to actually persist and live happily in the present moment now people who are not even in the concentration camps who are living in beautiful uh, houses their consciousness is many times more you know depressing than these people in the concentration camps these people were going through the 
most danger like kind of difficult kind of, kind of situations but they had hope and meaning and smiles on their faces some of these people because they had the right attitude so victor frankl says that whatever happens in your surroundings one thing is always in your control which is your attitude an attitude right attitude comes when we ask this question why i am doing you know why i am going through it and have a you know uh, based on uh the understanding from the scriptures have a positive uh understanding that ultimately god is all loving all kind all generous and there must be a positive uh perspective to the situation so and victor frankl tells about himself that he also was going through this depression but then he was thinking about oh i have a paper on psychology to be completed i have to meet my wife because i left my wife you know far away and you know i i want to just see what is happening to her in her life so these things actually gave him uh, you know with faith in god with uh, love for the loved ones and with a meaningful work which we he was intending to do in terms of research in psychology so these three things gave him enough you know meaning to his life even in that difficult situation to happily live for that present day so now if someone in that concentration can camp can live happily why cannot we live with motivation and happiness while we are having much better situations circumstances scenarios around us so that's what you know finding this meaning is motivation about now there is a misconception many times that you know uh, there is that money probably is the prime mover to move people to do great things right uh, they say baap bada na bhaiya sabse bada rupaiya right uh, this is what you know often people say so uh, people feel that actually if you are given enough money you you can get motivated to do anything uh, and that's also proven you know when we t- talk of suc- success how do we measure success so how is the success of countries measured can anyone type in the chat box gdp Com- companies success of companies it is measured in terms of okay revenues etc turnover right again it's money individuals so many many responses are coming in you know wealth infrastructure how people are happy longevity uh you know profit so moreover it's about money right when we are talking about success of companies we are talking about money revenues and uh, success of individuals is how much wealth people have what designation people have how much power do they have or we can say what is their net worth Hmm? uh or what is your network right network is a net worth and net worth defines your network so <clears throat> material comfort so basically we are defining success in terms of money but then uh there is some food for thought for all of us i'll share some examples from history of people who either didn't have any in- interest in the pursuit of money number 1 or number 2 by their situations and circumstances they didn't have any access to money or becoming rich but they still did great things in life which have changed the way the world is today so this is uh, an example which i am going to share about chanakya pandit so chanakya pandit uh, he is a 3rd century indian philosopher uh, who has authored this uh, political treatise called the arth shastra and he is considered a pioneer in political science and economics so uh, there's a anecdote about him uh, once he was sitting in his small kutir small you know hut outside uh, uh, some nice uh, contribution has come in sachin ji is saying real wealth is defined as how many days you can survive without resources that is without food and water even okay wow this is a interesting definition of wealth 
uh, how many days you can survive without resources or i would say uh, food and water is too far fetched how how many days can you survive without your gadgets that is the real thing we can't survive even you know in today's day and age for a few hours what to speak of a few days so uh, and another definition interesting definition of wealth you now speaking about wealth his uh, holiness radhan swami maharaj he says uh, he often says that uh, wealth is your real wealth is in how many things you have which money cannot buy right so if we if we just list down the things which we have which money cannot buy and amongst those things are uh, heart to heart meaningful relationships connections you know it's uh, money can buy comforts money can buy uh, people who will hang around us but people who are real well wishers to us that money uh, cannot buy and similarly peace of mind uh, comfort money can buy comforts but it cannot buy peace of mind and so many other things so moving to the story of chanakya pandit uh so the pandit had you know he was the main advisor to the king Ch- uh, chandragupt maurya and chandragupt maurya was ruling over practically uh, the most of the subcontinent in you know indian subcontinent however chanakya pandit was live, used to live in a very humble hut and once a chinese traveler came to meet uh, the pandit and the uh, pandit was working on something so he asked the traveler to wait for some time and then when he was done with his official work he did a very interesting thing hmm? he actually uh, you know put down uh, he extinguished the lamp with, under which he was working and there was another lamp by that side and he you know kind of uh, illuminated that lamp so now this was very interesting and intriguing for this chinese traveler he asked the pandit uh well both of these lamps are giving the same amount of light but why is it that you switched off one and you know uh, eliminated the other so the pandit said that before you came i was doing some official work and for that official work i was using the oil which was given by the king in in the uh, from the treasury of the king whereas now i am having a personal dialogue with you so i am not going to use any of those king's resources so that was the ethics and you know work ethics of uh, chanakya pandit he was the advisor of the king so he could practically he was the king maker but he didn't uh, take even you know little oil uh, for granted so the story goes on to show that uh, there are people who are not interested in money so what was chanakya pandit interested in chanakya pandit was interested in creating a kingdom based on principles of spirituality based on principles of dharma so that was his motivation it was beyond money right and and because of him the entire empire spread all over the indian subcontinent so it was not money which was motivating him similarly we have uh, you know socrates example of socrates aristotle plato so they 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 were a disciplic you know uh, you can say succession of philosophers in ancient greek in the 4th century and all of these they won't take you know they would have they won't take any remuneration from their disciples but they would be just happy to teach philosophy and the uh, the word philosophy means love for knowledge right so they love to teach that knowledge so so without any remuneration so and their name is edged in history not because they were looking for wealth but because they were looking to spread knowledge around and here this uh, gentleman um, can anyone write in the chat box who this person is tesla yes right you are right yes so this is nikola tesla and uh, as far as tesla is concerned hmm, he is known for inventions such as alternating current radio wireless technology neon and x ray now we cannot imagine modern equipments and modern facilities uh, without modern technology without any of these you know even a single of these uh, technologies which he invented but little do people know um, that tesla 
actually died um, you know penniless you know he he was living in one hotel but he didn't have uh, money to pay the bills and he moved on to another hotel and you know died you know being a bankrupt person because he was a scientist he was interested in uh, discovering things not necessarily uh, as people are interested today in monetizing what he is doing so he was very focused on uh, discoveries as a, as a scientist and another example i'll share this is uh, charles goodyear so charles goodyear he uh, he he is a person who invented vulcanized rubber but he is supposed to he is said to have died with a debt of 2 lakh dollars mm-hmm. uh, and the patent actual patent of vulcanized rubber was taken by someone else in britain whose name is thomas hancock right now goodyear says a very interesting thing he didn't win the patent he lost the patent although he was a person who invented vulcanized rubber but he says the advantages of a career in life should not be estimated exclusively by the standards of dollars and cents as is too often done man has just cause for regret when he sows and no one reaps so essentially what he's saying is that if i am doing great work i should be satisfied with the work itself not necessarily the results which i am going to get from that work right and this is what krishna is saying in the bhagavad gita karmane eva dikarase ma phaleshu kadachan hmm? so one has to be uh, very much dutiful towards the one's duties which one has to perform uh, by one's um, you know psychophysical nature and spiritual nature at the same time one should not desire the results or be attached to those des- results and that's what goodyear is uh, also kind of saying that if i sow the seed hmm, i should not be so selfish to think that i only should eat the fruit i have sown the seed but if someone else later on can eat that fruit that is success for me hmm? so this is uh, a very noble thought so uh, basically we discussed it is very important to uh, find out this very essential question which is why and uh, the why behind the why is we saw the example of the monkeys we saw the example of those two people digging the hole and uh, then we have seen that the answer to that why is not money even if people have a lot of money uh you know it, it doesn't lead to them contributing in a very you know kind of positive way to the society an example is that of uh, you know encarta and wikipedia so encarta was funded by microsoft whereas wikipedia was just a social science experiment where people just contributed uh you know their knowledge uh um, in, in an open source way and uh, encarta is nowhere to be known or heard today but wikipedia is so famous so this is an example that uh if like people have they have hunger for sharing knowledge then they they are not interested whether they can they are going to monetize it or not and an interesting uh, research was done uh by you know scientists from the university of chicago massachusetts institute of technology and carnegie mellon university and like i'm just going to share the sum and substance essence of that is that what they did was they gave people they gave people certain monetary benefits for doing certain uh, cognitive tasks you know a set of people they gave certain uh, you know kind of uh, monetary benefits for doing certain creative cognitive tasks like making a painting or uh, you know designing a logo or something so they gave people they said people someone they gave the same task and said we'll pay you 100 dollars to someone else they gave 200 dollars like that and similarly they gave another set of people some mechanical tasks and they gave them some you know uh, kind of reward say we'll pay you 50 dollars if you you know dig this uh, hole or you know make paint this fence or whatever and what the, what the results were very surprising the results were that for mechanical tasks monetary motivation works well their uh, kind of uh, performance for mechanical tasks was directly proportional to the amount of money which they were being given whereas for creative cognitive tasks for example solving a riddle a tough uh, word puzzle or uh, you know making a creative painting what they found was that the more money they they offered their productivity reduced because they were under pressure of okay i have to get this money so that creativity didn't really flow out 
so this is a very interesting thing that many times money can be uh, if a person is always thinking about money that can lead to uh, you know that can block the creative flow uh, of the person so therefore you know uh, this the theory which comes out of this is that there are two types of motivators the extrinsic motivators and the intrinsic motivators so what is extrinsic motivator extrinsic motivator is you know doing things because you know you want something from it so suppose um, a doctor you know a doctor is could see a patient uh, just so that okay uh, i'll get uh, if, if i cure this patient you know i'm i'm going to or if i operate this patient i'm going to get so and so you know 2 lakh or 3 lakh rupees so that could be the motivation for the doctor to cure that patient or else the doctor could have the motivation that okay this person is suffering can i be a good human being and you know what whatever skills that i have can i relieve his or her suffering okay. so that could be another motivation a meaningful motivation which the doctor could have so there are extrinsic motivators which are which are about the results or what you know uh, what i am uh, what is in it for me what am i going to get out of it at the end of doing it or i am i am doing it because someone is forcing me to do it or because my boss is you know boss will you know kind of uh, you know spoil my appraisal if i don't do it properly so that is an extrinsic motivator whereas an intrinsic motivator is something you really want to do it because you have a cause a purpose and meaning associated to that activity so extrinsic motivator is result oriented intrinsic motivating motivation is process oriented so in our lives also we, we we could think of things which have become a ritual or a drag and you can think what is the driving force probably the driving force is uh, something which you are you are you are getting out of that not necessarily the activity itself not necessarily a cause for doing that activity so if you associate that activity with a cause or a meaning or a purpose then automatically we get that motivation to do it so that's what extrinsic and intrinsic motivation means and i am going to share with you a concept uh, called the forbidden apple of motivation a uh, motivation is a very cliche term these days because you know motivational talks you know everyone is a motivational speaker right so the 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 the, uh, the secrets of motivation which you know now we, which i will be sharing are coming from the timeless vedic wisdom from the bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam and that is different from the motivation which you know you can probably get from the hundreds of uh, motivational speakers and motivational talks which are there floating around in the market of social media what is the difference so that this is the apple of motivation so this is like a motivational video which you watch now what happens to an apple after you know you keep it for 3 days 4 days it becomes rotten it, it shrinks right so that's what happens to this apple of motivation after 3 4 days you lose that you know energy that motivation okay now you have to watch another video now if you look at this apple this is a very interesting apple can someone spot what is interesting about this apple a really intelligent person can spot that yes it has no seeds so it is a genetically modified apple right it's a gm apple it's a monsanto apple so what happens to you know in most of these motivational videos or talks that we see you know they they, they really don't connect you to the to the roots of that motivation mm-hmm. uh, they don't really connect you to the original spiritual science which is actually like the seed for that apple of motivation so you have to again you know you cannot plant because you don't have any seed you cannot plant your own apple tree and get your apple for yourself rather so you have to depend on these monsanto of uh, motivational speakers who you know you have to pluck an apple every few days you have to watch their video to get that motivation whereas if you have an apple with the seed yourself then what happens is right 
that you can plant your own tree and have your own tree of motivation and actually give motivations motivation to others also give purpose and meaning to others lives also so so basically uh, what we are going to discuss is uh, is connected to the scriptures to the timeless vedic wisdom and therefore uh, when you apply these principles you can also have your own tree of motivation so that's what uh, you know uh, kind of hence forward we will disc- we'll be discussing uh, how to get that motivation so it will be based on these principles that we will connect to the root of this uh, you know motivation that of, which is spiritual knowledge so now another thing is being motivated is not enough you see here a terrorist and you see here an army man right both are fully motivated this terrorist is ready to lay down his life for his motivation you know to kill others because he thinks that these other people they they are uh, kind of uh, uh, a burden on earth whereas this other person he is also fully motivated to lay down his life but to protect others people's lives not to kill them right so both are motivated but they have different reasons so just being motivated is not enough we should also be motivated for the right reason and do the right thing after being motivated right so so for that let us you know uh, in the vedas there's a concept of purusharthas so what do purushartha the term purushartha mean hmm? so these are the four purusharthas dharma arth kam and moksha so if you look at it someone has typed uh, purushartha purush uh, purushartha is uh, technically means uh, you know the end to be attained mm-hmm. why you are working you know the motivation for which you are working you know purushartha uh, you know like dharma arth arth is a purushartha like kind of an end which you want to attain someone uh, has his end as wealth mm-hmm. or prosperity or power so he has the purushartha he or she has the purushartha of earth someone has the purushartha or motivation of kama which means fulfilling uh, the desires of the mind and the body someone has a motivation of dharma which is acting as per religious principles or uh, piety whereas someone is having a purushartha or motivation of moksha which is to get out of this uh, bondage of this material world so these are actually four motivations so looking at vedic scriptures we we find about we, there are these four types of motivations essentially so dharma is piety uh which is more, which is more or less duty bound that what is my duty in this world artha is power and prosperity driven motivation kama is pleasure driven and moksha is perfection perfection either spiritual perfection or even you know some people you find in uh, moksha is connected to samadhi right right people uh, you can uh, you can attain samadhi or you know samadhi leads to moksha right so sometimes you see some people they get samadhi in uh, the you know a musician can get samadhi in the music that they are playing so for that person while they are playing the harmonium or they are playing the drum for them it's samadhi they are fully absorbed in that for them they are fully into the mode of perfection so the uh, state of you know kind of complete absorption so these are the four motivators if we can if we see uh from uh, that any person can have and if you look at th- the two which are down kama and artha they are body centered motivators and these are extrinsic motivators and the above which is uh, on you know with a yellow background these are soul centered uh, i'm sorry the this word has cut but it is soul centered motivators and these are intrinsic in nature so when we you know saw in the previous slide that uh, there are extrinsic motivators and intrinsic motivators so this is uh, what the vedas talk of dharma and moksha they are uh, soul centered motivators which are intrinsic in nature and uh, kama and artha the, the, uh, which are extrinsic or body centered motivators so when someone is uh, working with a duty mindset that it's my duty to serve my parents it's my duty 
to study well as a student as a child uh, so they are having that dharma mindset some people they have the artha mindset for them ambition and uh, achievements is the only thing which drives them and for them it doesn't matter whether they have good relationships or not it doesn't matter whether they are righteous or virtuous or not it doesn't matter whether uh, you know there's only one life if after this i am going to go to hell doesn't matter so for them it's only power prosperity and prestige which matters which is artha motivation whereas there are people with kama motivations for them what matters is you know maza aayega ki nahi whether it will be fun or not so that's what their motivation is so if we are really looking to go from extrinsic motivation to intrinsic motivation we have to lead a life with these principles of dharma and moksha rather than kama and artha so what is the difference between extrinsic and intrinsic extrinsic motivators are result driven you know extrinsic kama and artha they are after what result i am going to get after i do this intrinsic motivators are cause driven now extrinsic motivators uh, they have diminishing returns actually uh, if a person uh, say suppose a person is earning um, say 10 lakhs per year you know now as he is you know after two or three years the same 10 lakh will appear to be less to him or her they may feel that are yaar my neighbor is earning 15 lakh my colleague is earning 18 lakhs so that 10 lakh which gave them a sense of self worth which gave them a sense of prestige in the society after two or three years it doesn't give them the same kick why because it is an extrinsic motivator it is related to what i can gather from the world around not what you know who i become as a individual so whereas intrinsic motivators which are about uh, you know uh, doing one's duty out of gratitude and respect or actually attaining perfection of life they are steady and having they are, or, or they have increasing returns so we'll see how so now uh, having discussed that uh, intrinsic motivators are basically moksha and dharma and extrinsic are kama and artha and we saw that intrinsic motivators are soul centric so now how do the vedas describe the soul as they describe that the soul has these three features sat chit and ananda right so now coming back to that mit study which we were discussing so that mit study says that there are three elements which actually help people increase their motivation for whatever they are doing uh, especially creative and cognitive tasks number one autonomy which is you know if someone is given the freedom to you know actually exp- you know kind of present their creativity if they are not you know put in a very bureaucratic system that motivates them to actually bring out their creativity another thing is mastery the desire to get better and better at something that matters and the third thing is purpose which is the yearning to do what we do in the service of something larger than ourselves so uh which is basically having a selfless purpose to our life uh, rather than just you know being uh, oriented towards uh, my own calm my own pleasure or my own artha my own prosperity but how i can contribute to others what is my duty to the society what is my duty to the environment what is my duty to the people around me to my family to my friends uh, and so and so forth and especially my duty towards god uh, which is the moksha quadrant which is how do i uh, you know reciprocate with god so having that purpose so now if you look at satchid ananda and these three things which this mit study is saying they will you fit with each other hand in glove so autonomy and sat it's talking about the same thing the sat feature of the soul is about having that eternal freedom right uh, which is all about autonomy the soul is currently bound by the body uh, which is and it has to you know transmigrate in the cycle of birth and death so it is bound and when one is liberated one had one gets that you know spiritual freedom similarly chit is uh, which is the knowledge potency which is about mastery and ananda uh, which is the third aspect of the soul is about purpose uh, having a meaning and purpose which actually gives us happiness so 
uh, talking about autonomy uh, can someone say what is this uh, uh, where have you seen this has anyone seen this uh, what is written on the on the screen live young live free which car which brand mahindra and mahindra yes so the mahindra cars they have this live young live free so you know we all want to live like you know free so we want to you know science is always after you know finding uh, mechanisms by which uh, we can overcome old age and disease right because we all want to fly free be free of those uh, you know kind of problems and uh, be autonomous and that's why you know people love to go to college you know children they are always dying to go to the college like their elder brothers and sisters because they know they will get more freedom so all of us are looking for freedom right that's why this entire thing about independence right the nations want to get independent because freedom autonomy is so important to us when there is no freedom there is no creativity the creativity is curtailed so if we want to be motivated we uh, autonomy is very essential and the second thing we discussed was mastery the chit potency is about mastery you know getting better at whatever we do now this woman you are seeing she has probably practiced for you know thousands of hours to get to a stage where she can you know constantly you know use this balls to juggle or this person is has even probably mastered much more this art of juggling right so people you know can spend so much of time and energy to really get better at what they do right so that mastery uh, is a, is, a, is a great motivator and the third thing is uh the quest for happiness or which is uh, we said about which is connected to having a purpose in life so now here uh, i'll share like we are going to close uh, soon so uh, regarding this uh, uh, in these three things autonomy mastery and purpose i'm going to share with you a short anecdote about how having a purpose in mind really changes the way we look at things and we do whatever we are doing so now here th- there are these people who are uh, working on laying a wall so a person goes and asks uh, one of those fellows and he asks them uh, my dear sir can you tell me what are you doing here and so this person says you know he's he looks very frustrated he looks very worked up and he just casts a glance at him and sees and says don't you see i am earning a living working day and night i am just getting enough to make my ends meet go away from here don't disturb me so this is what the first person says when he is asked what are you doing now the second person when he is asked my dear sir what is it that you are doing here so this person says that uh, sir i am a mason and i am a very good mason at that and uh, i lay very straight walls uh, and um, you know i lay very strong walls so this is what i am doing i am laying walls using stone and mortar now this person uh, who is asking he is impressed seeing that this person ha- is having a deeper understanding of his work he is not just uh, you know superficially doing things because he wants to get something else which is making his end meet he is also very much inspired by the work that which he is doing which is masonry now this person goes and asks a third person that dear sir i see that you are working very hard in the sun uh what is it that you are doing so the third mason he says that sir you see this building this building is soon going to become a temple of the lord and in this temple people will come and get spiritual education spiritual nourishment and uh you know know about the real purpose of life they will get motivated to live a happy meaningful life and serve others and i am feeling very honored and privileged to work to create this wall which will stay here for probably thousands of years and under this wall uh, in the, uh, near this wall you know hundreds and thousands of people will get shelter and meaning and purpose to their lives so now this was the best answer which this interviewer got mm-hmm. and as we all can see that uh, this third person his answer was not just about okay getting my ends meet or about my skill of doing my work but all but more about a purpose which he was serving mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, in the long run in terms of contribution to the society so it is said that if you want to be happy for an hour take a nap and it is said that if you want to be happy for a day uh, go on a trekking you know uh, go out on an ad- adventure you will be happy for a day if you want to be happy for a month get married that's what people say i don't know i am an i am a monk uh, and uh, they say if you want to get, uh, be happy for a year uh, inherit a fortune you know you may have you may get a fortune and then you know just uh, with extravaganza just spend it all in a year and then again you are bankrupt so if you want to be happy for a year inherit a fortune and if you want to be happy for a lifetime then that happiness can be found in serving others that happiness can be found in service to god and service uh, to the children of god um, and that's what the purpose helps people do and there's a very nice uh, quote by uh, saint uh, expiry he says that if you want to build a ship don't drum up the men to gather wood and divide the work and give orders instead teach them to yearn for the vast and endless seas so there are two ways of getting things done even if you are a manager right or, or even as uh, if you are doing parenting taking care of children there are two ways of telling them things to do one is okay just give them the job description with uh, number one task number one task number two task number three task number four that is one way of getting things done another way of getting things done is to appeal to their you know uh, intelligence and their heart give them a meaningful purpose of uh, why they should do the, that work and the rest they will figure out on their own you know even children uh, one is you you teach them task to do but then you know you just give them the uh, task other is teach them the values and virtues why they should serve and uh, how they should serve and automatically they will figure out for themselves they are intelligent so the why as we discuss is very essential very important and that why has to be founded and grounded based on uh, these two concept of dharma which is piety which is based on gratitude for what we have received from the society and community uh, around us the world around us and moksha which is about spiritual emancipation connecting to our soul which has this nature of satchid ananda uh, and that can give us lasting happiness in lasting uh, purpose and motivation in life um, i'll i think uh, we ha- i have so i have a few more slides to cover but i'll just uh, skip them uh, so so finally you can go through the book and read to uh, find out more uh, but i also speak uh, um, in the book about how are you going to increase your autonomy and uh, how are you going to because uh, having understood that autonomy mastery and purpose are important motivators is not enough we also need to create an environment of autonomy for ourselves we need to create an environment of mastery for ourselves and we need to create an environment of purpose for ourselves and how do we do that so for each of these uh, there are two things uh, one is a paradigm and another is a practice so to create an uh, autonomy for yourself we need to ha- create an a paradigm that of self direction they say that you know just the don't follow the herd you know but actually uh, you know direct your own life yourself so that paradigm we need to have that my choices are my choices they are not directed by others and uh, in order to do that we need we need to learn the practice of negotiation because we are living in an interdependent world and if we want to have autonomy we need to negotiate with the world around us right uh, if, if if as an employee you want more autonomy you have to negotiate it with from your boss right so self direction and negotiation are the paradigm and practice for increasing your autonomy for increasing your mastery uh, at whatever you are doing so suppose if you are a, uh, if you are um, an artist or a doctor uh, or whatever profession you are in right the paradigm needed is self improvement if one thinks that okay i am great at what i am doing so then you cannot you have frozen your limit to learn but if you always feel that i have something to learn more 
you know then that paradigm of self improvement helps you keep improving and you know enhancing your skills and then to enhance your skills you need discipline you need to work on yourself uh, personally and in terms of your skills so that is that will enhance your mastery uh, which needs discipline the practice of discipline and for ananda which is purpose the paradigm is self discovery you know you need to discover yourself because unless we discover our skill set our abilities our uh, ethics our own value system we won't be able to find out our purpose and if we if we are not able to find out our purpose we won't find motivation in what we are doing so that paradigm of self discovery to actually do introspection do journal writing or and that is very important and for having this paradigm we need that practice of meditation to spend time uh, doing spiritual practices uh, especially you know uh, reading scriptures chanting meditation all of those things can really help to actually discover your purpose and when all of these practices and principles are put in place then automatically you will find the hot, hyper loop of motivation activate in your in all of our lives and we will find happiness uh, and great meaning to whatever we are doing and really contribute to the world around us in a very positive way so thank you all very much hari krishna so now uh, priya chaitanya prabhu can you guide us uh, how do we go ahead Hare Krishna Prabhu ji if you have some time uh, we can have some quick Q&A Hare Krishna Okay so uh, Priya Chetan Prabhu are you there or someone from the organizers at Godan Eco Village There are questions coming in should we take the question Okay, so the, let's uh, take the questions. How to not feel guilty because of indebtedness to ones who have given to you selflessly and turn it into motivation? Hmm. Okay, so this is uh, yeah, uh, Geeta ji has said a very profound thing actually here. Uh, in the video, we saw that people who are who went to certain crisis, they translated that crisis into uh you know positive motivation so actually uh, you know when we receive from people you know if we develop and nourish that feeling of gratitude for what we have received then automatically that springs us uh, forward to reciprocate with what have with what we have received from them so one definition of uh, gratitude it is called kritagyata in uh, sanskrit which means that the ability to remember what others have done for us so there are different types of memories there are special memory people with special memory they can remember the you know maps navigation uh, people with a musical memory they can very well uh, remember and you know work on music there, there is analytical or reasoning uh, rational reasoning memory so that is also there but uh, this memory about what others have done for us that is called gratitude and if we can uh, you know can kind of cultivate that gratitude that will give us that motivation that as a student taking an example if a student is conscious of what all i have received from my parents they will be very much motivated okay let me at least do something which they expect from me is uh, which which i am supposed to do which is you know at least study well because um, that will also that will help me only so so yes gratitude can be translated into a great motivation and gratitude we see is connected to the principle of dharma so if one lives by the principle of dharma automatically one will cultivate that gratitude and uh, be able to turn that into a motivation and uh, that entire in, in 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 you know in the hari krishna you know iskon we in the morning we chant uh, the guru ashkam which is all about gratitude for the spiritual uh, you know Uh, uh kind of compassion shown by the spiritual teachers so yes that's very important let's take the next question uh, as money is very important part of our lives how should we approach what should be our approach towards our purpose and ambition as society induced necessities 
ट but money is not the end goal in of itself money has to be used for as we said the end goal can be dharma or moksha dharma which means uh, you know basically acting by the religious principles serving the society serving our family uh, serving our uh, friends you know uh, doing acts of compassion generosity which krishna says in the gita is yagya dana tapa you know doing yagya which means sacrificing something for others uh, uh dana you know giving in charity tapa is taking some austerity for our personal purification so that is uh, basically uh, you know that should be the end result of earning money so uh, if money is not directed towards compassion or charity uh, then that money can become very bind- very much binding so yes money has to be sought for one's own um, kind of um, general well being and upkeep but more importantly also for uh, using it as a means to help others so 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 yes uh, for moksha and uh, you know dharma we can we have to accumulate money we have to uh, gain gain money and that's uh, that's a noble uh, motivation but if money is the only and the end motivation then actually it leads to frustration because even if you have uh, bhagavatam says arthasya sadhane siddhe utkarshe rakshane vyay nash upabhoga ayasa trasas chinta bramo nena that in the entire life cycle if of uh, accumulation and uh, investment and you know protection of wealth and finally spending and enjoying wealth there's so much of envy involved there are people envious if you have a lot of money there are people who are competitive want to pull you down Uh, and there are people who are eyeing on your money so there's so much of anxiety if money is the only motivation for us in life and then that also dies down after some time so yes so i i hope that answers the question prabhu uh, another question is coming in how to not procrastinate in achieving our goals we have the desire to do well and have ability to but are delaying things to the next day what to do uh so the uh, so basically there could be several reasons one reason could be lack of motivation and as we discussed lack of motivation could be because of lack of purpose mm-hmm. uh, that could be one of the factors so if we can work on those things which we discussed um having a paradigm of self discovery and a practice of meditation and along with you know kind of a, a practice of discipline and a paradigm of self improvement uh, those things can help us you know find our purpose and work towards that which will help us to mo- get motivation but along with motivation another very important component is discipline so even if you have the motivation or will power uh, motivation is about i want to do it right motivation is the language of motivation is i want to do it mm-hmm. the mo- language of conviction is i should do this so conviction is head language like what goes on in the head is i should be uh, you know working hard to achieve this goal so that is head heart is motivation i want to do this so head is important conviction is important motivation is important but along with uh, conviction and motivation the third thing is determination which is i will do this right which which is basically we need to uh really discipline ourselves mm-hmm. without discipline you know our motivation will die down so motivation requires discipline to you know help it to translate into um reality and not going to the mode of procrastination so i guess this will help uh, you know supporting our motivation with discipline prasik raman prabhu another question prasikraman prabhu how can one understand the purpose of life and what skill one should make mastery on how to integrate and increase autonomy mastery and purpose so what i am going to do now 
is uh, you know sh- uh, means i will send a document i'll try to send a document to everyone so which is basically an activity which you can do for yourself to work on your motivation so this this activity is exactly meant to uh, increase your uh, motivation and help you align your autonomy mastery and purpose so thank you for asking this question so let me quickly uh, see if i can post this yeah prasad sikravan prabhu can you hear me can you hear me prabhu so i have shared two documents uh so these these are exercises which will uh, help you integrate autonomy mastery and purpose and help increase you know you know it, uh, your motivation and also you know how do you negotiate and uh, increase your autonomy or how you use discipline to increase your mastery all of those things you can someone is asking my email id so i am just typing it out so uh, i have shared that document the activity it's a word document prasikram prabhu okay so how are we placed so uh, preeshadan prabhu please guide us on uh, yes. can you hear me there are few more you, questions which i see can you can you hear me okay the question is fear seems to be a primary motivator for me personally why does fear take such a big role in thinking how can we work on it so uh, yes if you look at fear fear is very much connected to the paradigm of either artha and or kama when our primary motivation is uh you know just the financial prosperity or power then automatically you know we will have fear what if someone else takes my place or my position because it is based on temporary designations so definitely something which is temporary is associated with fear but spiritual uh, understanding uh is 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 not temporary it is eternal so if we have that spiritual identification and designation that is free of all fear so if we cultivate that spiritual identification and designation uh, automatically it frees us from the fear of the temporary uh, gains and losses which are uh, supposed to happen in this world in the journey so 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 basically the answer is to shift from extrinsic motivators to intrinsic motivators uh, and for that we need to become more soul centric than body centric uh, so that that and the journey for that you know we discuss and also you can read more about it in the book uh, about, about how we can include and incorporate the paradigm and practices for autonomy mastery and purpose in our lives so i hope krishnan ji it helps uh, it answers the question geetanjali ji has a question uh, which says that how to let go of the guilt that is hampering our motivation okay guilt uh, hampering the motivation maybe you may have to uh, okay spell it uh, more clearly but uh, these negative emotions if we if it speak about fear or guilt uh, you know these are negative emotions which are uh connected with a body centric approach to life whereas a soul centric approach to life uh has qualities of gratitude of uh, respect of humility of uh, you know um, positive approach towards life so uh, again the secret lies in becoming soul centric 
rather than you know being body centric and of course it's a process it's not that uh, overnight we become soul centric but it's a process uh, by which we gradually uh, you know translate our fears into uh, hopes we translate our the feeling of guilt into a feeling of gratitude uh, for what we have you know counting our blessings so i i guess we should end here uh, priya yeah, chetan prabhu would you like to make some final show. announcements yes you can hear me now yeah so uh, we thank everyone for uh, joining this uh, program and thank you for this uh, brilliant presentation rasik raman prabhu so as we have put in the in the chat we have shared uh, we hope everyone is part of the whatsapp group where we are going to share the details of more upcoming workshops and also residential workshops at govardhan eco village both online and offline so we will share the details by tomorrow itself so we have uh, online offerings coming up on april 1st 2nd and 3rd and we also have a residential workshop coming up in the last week of april at govardhan eco village where we'll be conducting more uh, workshops we'll getting more insights on the smart you challenge and actually working on our personality so we thank everyone for joining us and we also thank rasik raman ji for this wonderful presentation and uh, if any one two more burning questions then we can just take or we can end the session anybody has one la last question hi krishna prabhu yes my question is how to cultivate self discipline okay that that's uh, that's really a burning question <laughs> yeah <laughs> how to cultivate uh, discipline so um, discipline the journey of discipline begins with as i said the head heart and the hand so if you want to be disciplined about something we need to answer this question that are you convinced i you know uh, should i do this so suppose uh, you want to shed weight you want to do exercise just taking a random example it could be any other thing which you are wanting to be disciplined yeah. about so i want to you know kind of do exercise so are you really convinced that you need to shed weight or i are you really convinced that you want to be healthy so that's the first thing uh, so it should start from a, a conviction and for that conviction you may need to read about the benefits of um, good health so that conviction will uh, once that conviction comes in it will become easier to follow that discipline second is you know having that heart understanding of motivation so really you know uh, if you want to visualize yourself uh, as a more healthy person so that you can contribute more you can serve more you can uh, do your uh, you know profession better so that motivation from the heart has to be there and finally that determination or will power has to be there and these three things are there head heart and hand think in uh, that will uh, that will be the first step and second step is a practical thing is which is about uh so i am giving you an acronym h is head heart and hand you know uh, synergy which is the first thing which is uh, about habit as a first letter h next thing is accountability which means uh, you need to be you know if you if you keep yourself accountable to someone some accountability partner with whom you share your uh, consistency and also your failures if you are not able to do you report and that will act as, act as a you know kind of positive motivator for you to continue that um, discipline for yourself so a stands for accountability b stands for breakless consistency which means uh, that the the more gaps you leave in between the more difficult it becomes for you to continue your exercises anyone who has done exercises knows that if you leave a gap of one day you know you give some excuse the next day again you you will find another excuse and it will become more difficult the second and the third day so basically not giving a gap and how you can do it is keep the targets very small and achievable which which is about incremental improvement uh, so b stands for breakless consistency and i stands for incremental improvements uh, to be able to make those incremental improvements and uh, you know start small and grow big and third is uh, 
triggers find out the triggers or, or um, situations which help you uh, in that discipline so for example if you are looking at controlling your social media usage you know restrict those triggers maybe uh, use a parental control or something so that you don't fall into it uh, so much so basically there are certain things which can help us cultivate self discipline uh, you know through this um, formula we will discuss more about this this is just uh, you know we are talking about cultivating discipline and habit and this is exactly what we are going to discuss in the uh, workshop which is coming up uh, yes and as you said the distinction between the head and the heart the head you you know why you should do something but yes. the heart the heart means you actually want to do it yes not just know why it's good for you it's not just theoretical uh, mm. okay yeah, so i think the heart motivation is probably a stumbling block <laughs> you know so then then the question becomes you know how to come to the point where you actually want to do what you know is good for you so so for that this uh, entire thing about self discovery is many times we are disconnected from our inner aspirations and desires you know externally we may be you know socializing going around saying different things doing different things but uh, our in real self is you know kind of there are layers and layers of designations which are there and we are probably many times hiding behind so many hats we are using so many hats wearing so many hats so many times we are hiding behind those hats the real identity is hiding behind those hats and uh, and that is many times uh, a, a kind of a, a obstacle for us to really connect deep within so motivation mm-hmm. is something which comes from deep within from your heart and uh, so if we do this spiritual practices meditation uh, introspection journal writing it will help us connect to our hearts in a uh, like we spend time with people and that helps us to know them right if you want to know someone you got to spend time with them right mm-hmm. so similarly yeah. if you want to know yourself know your inner aspirations know your inner motivation you need to spend time with yourself so uh, that's um, an essential part of it which i think can help all of us uh, find that motivation mhm mhm yeah cuz there there are certain things if you don't know yourself properly you will not see the things that are blocking who you are from what you know you should be doing is that it? wow you pinned it down perfectly so you know we need to know ourselves and then all those blockages which which might be there in our uh, which are stopping us to understand ourselves realize ourselves uh, will be removed and then uh, we'll be face to face with our real aspirations and uh, develop motivation for that okay look for, looking forward to future <laughs> thank you Prasad, thank you so much thank you gail Thank you Krishna. Mm-hmm. Hi Krishna. Okay, anybody has anyone last or we can just uh, close the program here. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I have a question. Who are everybody? Okay. is possible for us to find yes please go ahead uh-huh. is it possible for us to find a uh, really great big all consuming motivation and that is a bit obsessive and is it good okay to have an obsessive motivation uh so as i said uh, motivation itself is not the real thing uh, what is it uh, that you know uh, the that motivates us that's also that's more important that matters more so we saw the terrorists and we saw the army men both are highly motivated but then what are we motivated motivated about right so that is very important 
so if someone is obsessed uh, with some motivation that shows that they are not in the quadrant of dharma and moksha uh, or they are not in the quadrant of piety or duty and all the quadrant of perfection or spiritual emancipation so the fact that someone is too obsessed so much obsessed with their motivation that they are ready to neglect uh, people around them they are ready to you know kind of trample on others aspirations and desires and uh, you know well being that shows that they are probably coming from a space of uh, being motivated by power prestige position or pleasure uh, which is inherently selfish so if a person's motivation becomes obsessive or compulsive uh, that shows that it is uh, not intrinsic but it is extrinsic uh, real motivation intrinsic motivation is holistic because it is selfless by nature it is uh, taking into picture account that i am a small part of this uh, you know colossal creation of the lord and i have a small role to play you know i am not here to conquer the world but i am here to play my small part to help others and serve others and such a motivation will always be in synergy with our environment will be in harmony with the environment so the is am i addressing your question properly or do you want to clarify on the question how to control our addiction hello uh, sorry um actually uh, my question also was ki uh, if we would uh, like uh, just focus on dharma and moksha won't that be won't that uh, limit us like uh, won't that make us just satisfied with what we have and like won't we grow, uh, like sometimes some people are able to grow to a big extent even when they're focused on kama and artha so aren't they like they are able to find dharma and moksha within their kama and artha as well or something like that i kind of try to understand that like sometimes uh, there is soulfulness even in uh, uh, even through pleasure even through our finding meaning you find uh, your own duty or you find your own moksha in that place and uh, like uh, isn't it uh, like like again we can go through extrinsic towards intrinsic as well and find a balance that way uh, as well like we can do more too and we can get, develop a hunger for earth and kama but at the same time have a soul full um, understanding of ourselves right? so the, can we yeah uh, yeah thank you for this very thoughtful um, you know kind of question about uh, is it that we are excluding or trying to eliminate the concept or the motivation of artha and kama so my answer is no uh, what we are saying is that these are secondary motivators uh, they are not the end motivators they are not uh, the the kind of the end in themselves so artha and kama they have to be used uh, or directed towards dharma and moksha basically your position your power your prosperity your pleasure has to be used for serving others which is piety and has to be used for spiritual emancipation which is uh, spiritual perfection uh, so if they are used for that goal then then actually it's great it it is all the more desirable that we cultivate artha and we cultivate kama but when they are done independently or separately without seeing the connection right when one is obsessed with just generating wealth you know just just obsessed with ambition and power and position then even though he may or he or she may think that okay i, I will use it for uh, the benefit of the world of the society but they may not even know what is the real benefit uh, you know kind of they may use it in a way which they feel that may be beneficial but it may turn out uh, that it may be harmful or dangerous uh, for the society you know it is said the road to hell is paved with the good intentions uh, along with good intentions uh, we need also need the right knowledge and that's why we need uh, spiritual knowledge and uh, you know a dharmic understanding of life 
to be able to uh, harmonize so whole thing is about synergizing and harmonizing but the end goal has to be either of dharma or moksha uh, and not kama and artha so dharma and moksha can be the engine and they will drive uh, they will give you more motivation to do your you know uh, uh, you know profession even better than if just your goal is uh, earning money so am i able to you know kind of uh, kind of clarify this yes yes um so finally it is like when you talk when you do it for someone else for a greater purpose than other than yourself you are able to increase your uh, scope and you are able to increase your dimension of thinking and gives you more uh, power to do much more than uh, what is uh, what you will be able to do if you only focus on yourself is the main thing here so when yes. you focus got it yes ex- exactly yes and that will be sustainable and lasting also okay and to develop such a mindset to develop such a um motivation it's like it is not uh, something that will develop overnight it is something that is a complete process yes so, it, it's it's a process it uh, uh, like kind of the whole uh, thing about developing autonomy mastery purpose we apply those principles and over a period of time uh, we we kind of develop these qualities uh, move from body center approach to soul centered approach and soul center approach includes uh, the body centric Uh, features as well so yes we are all on that journey thank you very much prabhu thank you very- i'm sorry priya chetan bro in between my you know speaker wasn't working so i was not able to hear you uh, apologize for that so please uh, guide us if there are any other questions or no we can uh, we can end now prabhu ji if anybody has other questions and we can uh, put in the whatsapp group we'll open up we'll open up the whatsapp group for some time tomorrow and uh, please do join everyone the whatsapp group we have shared the link in the uh, chat and all updates regards to online workshops more webinars and also residential workshops in the city as well as at govardhan eco village so we'll be sharing all the updates in this whatsapp group and no other updates so please do join and stay connected thank you all everybody for joining us hare krishna namaskar thank you all